you know, we created Zinger. So that's the Virgin, that's Zinger, that's the car, that's rock and roll. We needed to create from a clean sheet architecture a full digital design manufacturing assembly system. So our software stack first off is generative design software, meaning we give it a high level set of inputs, bounding box, what volume can it consume, what's the target stiffness, what's the target mass, high level requirements. We think we've built a better topology optimization engine in that when we benchmark other topology optimization softwares, we actually produce a lighter design while meeting all the requirements of stiffness, of crash, of durability that we have given that design. Sort of seven years and about $400 million later, we have that production system. Once you've created that perfect structure in three dimensions, then you need to materialize it. You need some way with fidelity that you can create it. You know, in this case, we're using powder bed laser centering. So you take that data, obviously you slice those three dimensions into printable layers, and then you print those layers, in our case, out of materials that we've purpose designed for each of the different automotive application. The materials is really the basis for everything. It is the basis for our design software because that material card, the material performance is actually what's driving our designs. It's also the basis for printing quickly and efficiently. So designing a material that, for example, absorbs the laser power so that you can print at a higher laser power. The 3D printing is the materialization of that fully uh, optimized structure data. So if you look at the, the chassis structure itself, almost all of the frame structure, so the actual physical crash performance structure of the vehicle is all designed, printed, and assembled using Divergent Adaptive Production System, the entire suspension system, and I'd say the uh, induction and exhaust elements of the uh, internal combustion engine are all uh, 3D printed, you know, as a more advanced stage, for example, is what we call the brake node, you know, which is taking two different subsystems, uh, a suspension subsystem, the upright, say, for the front uh, of the suspension, and the brake caliper from the brake, and instead of having those be two separate attached systems, you create one unified system, functional integration. So that kind of functional integration, for example, reduces the mass of the combined structures by 40%, but increasing stiffness by about 30%, obviously massively reducing design time, massively reducing number of parts and vendors. And then all of these materials we've designed, they're designed to be closed loop recyclable materials. So at the end of their life, you're simply re-atomizing them and turning them into a new structure. We have a whole series of cars in a portfolio that we're going to build. Uh, we're going to show the next car. What, what it is exactly is secret, but you'll see that at uh, uh, Pebble Beach in uh, a couple of months, in August. Uh, but the plan is that Zinger vehicles will always use the most cutting edge version of uh, divergence adaptive production system tools, mm. create things that are constantly pathbreaking in terms of design and performance and sustainability. And you know the evidence will be in this these kind of crazy high performance vehicles in different areas that we produce. But divergent and the printing technology, we're looking to really change the industry as a whole. So have that technology apply across all of automotive, but then have it actually apply across other industries as well, such as aerospace and defense. And long term, you know, it may be the system that's used for all of this.